Thanks for tuning in. You're watching Arirang Newsbreak. I'm Hwang Jie filling in for Han Daun. We begin with President Park Geun-hye's message on this Children's Day, celebrating the public holiday that falls on May 5th every year. President Park recorded a video message encouraging children to fulfill their dreams as they represent the future of Korea. Take a listen. 여러분은 우리의 희망이자 나라의 미래를 이끌어갈 주인공입니다. 신나게 뛰어놀고 여러 가지를 경험하면서 여러분이 가진 꿈을 마음껏 키워나가기 바랍니다. President Park stressed, Park stressed that children must be blessed and loved, and she pledged to make Korea a safer and happier country. As in other years, she also invited around 300 elementary school students to the presidential office of Changwade for some exciting events and performances at the presidential garden. And hundreds of thousands of Koreans are heading off for a short break as the country begins a four-day holiday. Traffic is starting to ease up after some heavy congestion this morning as people try to get out of town. The Korea Expressway Corporation said as of 3 p.m., the travel time from Seoul to the port city of Busan by car is about five and a half hours. It takes about two hours from Seoul to Daejeon and three and a half hours to Gangneung on the east coast. Travelers can access to up-to-the-minute traffic information on a smartphone app provided by the Korea Expressway Corporation. Koreans are also heading abroad this weekend, and about 85,000 have already left today. The country is also expecting a flood of tourists over the break, with Incheon International Airport estimating around 180,000 visitors, mostly from China and Japan. Shifting years, North Korea is gearing up to hold the rarest of rare political events. At the Workers' Party Congress, the regime's leader Kim Jong-un is widely expected to cement his political status and herald a new era of leadership that is independent from his predecessors. Park Jong-hong reports. The Workers' Party Congress is expected to declare nothing short of a new era of leadership by Kim Jong-un at North Korea's highest decision-making body. The General Congress was held six times from 1946 to 1980, but has not been convened since the rule of Kim Jong-un's grandfather, Kim Il-sung. It means the Congress that starts Friday will be the first in 36 years. North Korea watchers say the event will likely run for three to four days at a cultural center in Pyongyang. Already, more than 3,000 party members attending the Congress are said to have gathered in the city. The Congress is expected to showcase Kim Jong-un's achievements in the economic and military fields and cement the path for his long-term rule. Kim is expected to underscore his will not to give up nuclear development and push ahead with it along with economic initiatives. Experts also say he may be nominated to the highest post in the Workers' Party, a promotion from his current title of first secretary. The motive behind this is to have Kim emerge from the shadows of his predecessors and solidify his position as the supreme leader. But experts say the event may end up merely being local propaganda due to the extensive sanctions imposed on North Korea for its series of hostile provocations. Park Jong-hong, Arirang News. Donald Trump says the United States should pressure its allies, including South Korea and Japan, to bear 100 percent of the cost of the American troop presence. His comments have raised concerns in Seoul as Trump is now considered the Republican Party's presumptive nominee. Kim ji reports. Donald Trump, the de facto Republican presidential nominee, says South Korea should pay for all costs related to the U.S. troop presence in the country. He has made similar comments before, but this marks the first time Trump has called for U.S. allies, including Japan and Germany, to shoulder all expenses. In an interview with CNN, Trump said, of course they should pick up all the expense. Why are we paying for this? When the interviewer mentioned that Seoul already pays half of the cost to keep U.S. troops on the peninsula, which amounted to over 800 million U.S. dollars last year alone, he says, why not a 100 percent? 
The billionaire businessman goes on to say that the U.S. should even be prepared to walk, referring to withdrawing troops unless Seoul pays more. He said, quote, if they don't take care of us properly, if they don't respect us enough to take care of us properly, then they're going to have to defend themselves. There are roughly 28,000 American troops stationed on the peninsula as a deterrent to North Korean aggression, a legacy of the Korean War. Trump's statements carry even more weight now that his rivals have ended their campaigns, leaving him as a presumptive nominee for the Republican Party. Ohio Governor John Kasich ended his campaign on Wednesday, just a day after Texas Senator Ted Cruz bowed out of the race. Kim Jeong, Arirang News. As discussions on financing the government's corporate restructuring drive gain momentum here in Korea, the country's top central banker took a cautious stance. BOK Governor Lee Ji-yeol says there should be an acceptable basis for the central bank to use its authority to print more money. There have been growing calls for the central bank to support state banks that will be saddled with debt from the country's ailing shipping and shipbuilding companies. The governor also expressed skepticism about the central bank giving cash directly to the state banks to expand their capital base, saying the bank cannot use its authority to print money without collateral. And that brings us to the end of our newscast. Thank you for watching.